Now, before I show you the dimensions of intimacy, let me show you five benefits. So that you will take it serious. Number one, what's the first benefit of intimacy? Intimacy is the gateway for the receipt of power of life. A man who does not have intimacy with God will first of all not touch life. And even if he touches it, he will not grow in life. The quality of his life will not be enhanced. When a man begins to walk with God closely and in intimacy, his life and his life force begins to blossom. Even in the natural, as you know, all of us have the animal life. But your, the quality of your life, who just wakes up, sleeps on the bed from morning till night, cannot be compared to somebody who wakes up in the morning, goes to a gym, exercises himself, sits down, reads books, and is tasking his mind. After a few years, you will discover that the guy who doesn't exercise will start struggling with high blood pressure. Because even the bloodstream will start being choked by cholesterol. And he will start having a lot of crisis. He might even spiral into obesity. He becomes plumby. He has a lot of flesh but no strength. But the guy who exercises, even when he's 70 years old, he will wear his suit and be walking corporately. The one who doesn't exercise at 38 and 40, he will start having back pain. Especially if he's tall. He will have pain on the back and on the neck. Because the muscles are not tough. The muscles are weak. Meanwhile, the one who exercises, even at 60, he will wake up in the morning and say, how are you doing? Every muscle has been tacked, so pain can come. So even in the natural, there is something you do to enhance the quality of your life. That's how it is in the spirit. When you begin to build intimacy with God, you touch life and you blossom in life. In John 17 verse 3, Jesus was speaking. He said, this is life eternal, that you may experience God. Jesus said, if you have not experienced God, you have not known life. The word that you may know him there is the word epignosis. And I'll talk about knowledge as I touch on intimacy. He said, life is to experience God. So if you want to touch the essence of eternity and eternal life, he said, the key is intimacy with God. If you have not experienced God, he said, you have not known life. First John chapter 5 verse 20. The apostle also came to corroborate the position of Jesus. He said, and we know that the son of God is come and had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. These words know are words that represent levels of experience of God. They are levels of intimacy that we may know that he had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. Even the son, Jesus Christ, that is the true God and eternal life. You see how many times he spoke about know and understand. Know and understand. So as you experience him and experience him, you will get to interact with weights and measures of life. And the degree to which you interact with life is the degree to which you enjoy your existence. Somebody who has cancer now cannot sit down the way you are sitting. By now, he would have been fatigued already because that is something affecting the quality of his life. Somebody who has pie will not sit on the chair and relax, even if there is AC. Because if life is challenged, then you can no longer enjoy the meaning of existence. So the more a man grows in intimacy with God, the more the quality of his life increases. And the more the quality of his life increases, the more meaningful his existence will become. Now, that's the first benefit of intimacy. But there are many more. The second benefit of intimacy is transformation and transfiguration. Transformation and transfiguration is just a spiritual technology that changes you to become like the God that created you. Because God did not just create us to function like men. Although he created us as men, but he wanted us to function like him. That's why Genesis 1.26 said, let us make man. So he created men, but he said in our image, after our likeness, let them have dominion like us. So although we are created men, but God wants us to operate like him. The idea is for you to be in the God class. Now, if you study the Bible in John 8.12, 
Jesus called himself the light of the world. And then in John 5, 14, he now calls you the light of the world. Everything Jesus referred to himself at some point, he now refers it to you. Jesus called himself the son of God. A point came, he now said, you too, you are the son of God. So although you were created man, but your design of your operation was to be in the order of God. So the whole idea behind transformation and transfiguration is for you to begin to operate in the God class. And the key to unlocking that God dimension in you is intimacy. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, We all with unveiled faces, beholding as in the glass, the image of the Lord. It says, We are changed from glory to glory, even to that same image as by the Spirit of the living God. So the more we interact with him, the more we are transformed and transfigured. And a man can be transfigured to a level where you see him. It will, it will almost be as though you have seen God. In fact, the man will carry so much of God that if you even start talking about him, the aura of God will descend there. When we were in, in Yaoundé, I was drifting with some of our brothers that traveled with me about a man of God that carried so much of God. As I was talking about his experiences, the atmosphere in the room changed as if we were preaching Jesus because of the much, the much of God the man carried. At some point, the man was in a meeting and he was worshiping with few leaders and he levitated. Suddenly, the glory became too much that he, he started literally being becoming physically raptured and he was ascending. He had to slow the worship down to descend again and to walk like men. He held a glass of water, he fell and scattered and he spoke to the glass and the glass assembled itself and came up. <laughs> you will think, you think magic is strong. It's because you don't know God. If you know the realm of God, you'll discover that magic is a miniature expression of reality. Those are dimensions that men carry because of what? Transfiguration. You remember? I've quoted several times, Matthew 17 verse 2. The Bible said that Jesus was praying. He said the fashion of his, of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. Even his cloth began to glow. So the transfiguration was so strong that it affected even his garment. You don't know why the woman with the issue of blood will touch his garment and virtue will flow out and heal her. Because every time Jesus communed with the Father, the weight of the glory has its residue on the garment. Powers of intimacy. Now, when a man is transfigured, anything that cannot happen to Jesus cannot happen to him. That's the key behind transfiguration. And so, because Jesus cannot be rejected, you too cannot be rejected. Because Jesus cannot be overwhelmed, you too cannot be overwhelmed. Because Jesus cannot be defeated, you too. So suddenly you now discover that even unconsciously, you start having experiences that are divine and celestial. Not even the ones you are exacting your faith for. But because you have been transfigured to a level. So the glory moves with you everywhere you go to. That's the power and the excellency of intimacy. And this is why the devil will fight intimacy until you leave this world. Because he knows that therein lies the realization of your potential. You who thinks you are weak and helpless. Allow yourself to be transfigured a little. You will be shocked the kind of life that you should command. The reason you are helpless is because God is not much in expression in your life. Transfiguration, transformation are key components of intimacy. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 and 2, he said, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. He said, It does not yet appear what we shall be like. He said, But when we shall see him, he said, We shall be like him. So the moment you begin to have intimacy with God, you begin to migrate and metamorphose into the God kind. And when you operate in the God kind, only what is allowed to happen to God can happen to you. The reason most men cannot fail is not necessarily because they are the best strategists. It's because they have become too much like God for failure to be tolerated in their realm. So even if they got the strategy wrong, the power of creation is resident with them. Things will still work the way it should work because of the level of transfiguration. 
The second, ben third benefit of intimacy is exploit and impact. In Daniel 11, 32, it said, they that do know their God. It didn't necessarily say they that study the Harvard. It didn't say they that have an inheritance from a king. All of those things can be fringe benefits. But they said, if it is insurance you are looking for, for impact and for exploit, he said the key is experiential knowledge of God. They that do know their God, they be part of that scripture. He said they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. So exploit is a byproduct of intimacy. This is why you find some people, they really don't look like what they are doing. But you can't deny the impact. The impact of their lives is so strong that sometimes you even look at them, you are, you are wondering. Sometimes you come to a place, you want to meet them to see what their secret is. When you now meet them, you'll be disappointed because they will be as natural and as human as every other person. But what their lives command, you, will not, you cannot but wonder at why their life is so. Is because of where they stand with God. You know, when Elijah came before Ahab, he didn't attribute his authority and impact to anything. He said, before God, whom I stand, he said, there shall be no rain nor dew. The question is, how does before God, whom I stand, affect geography? How does it affect weather interpretation? What, 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 which point are you making to the, to the kind of mind is senseless. And even Ahab thought he was joking. If Ahab knew the impact of that statement, he would have arrested him. Go nowhere. But he thought the guy was a clown. When the guy walked away, after two weeks, although they were in rainy season, there was no rain. He now said, come, that man that came that day, what did he say his name was again? <laughs> now you have to go and study about him. Unfortunately, even the people didn't do a thorough research. They said, he said, this one, Eli something. Elijah, Tishbite. Is it possible that what he said is what is happening? They say, Abba, come on. Ah. The earth is older than him now. How can he just come overnight and change weather? <laughs> okay. The earth is older than him, but where he stands is older than the earth. <laughs> After three months, the king said, come, this thing is serious. They now went to a council meeting. And for the next two and a half years, they were looking for Elijah everywhere. When Obadiah saw him, he said, go and tell the king I'm coming. The man said that surely as the Lord God liveth, I will not leave you. <laughs> the king has looked for you everywhere. Anywhere there's a human being, the king went there. That was the same man that came to the king and the king didn't bother to find out who he is. The king now is looking for him. The primary preoccupation of the king is to find Elijah. And before Elijah came, he said, go and gather all the prophets on the mountain. I'll meet you there. The king became servant impact and exploit is a function of intimacy. Number four, benefit of intimacy is that intimacy provides specific direction that makes for productivity. When you find people who are confused, it's because they don't stay with God. When you stay there, you will see something. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, it says, ask of me, I will answer. And I don't only answer. It says, I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. I also show things. I show things. I will show you things that you do not know. That your brain cannot teach you. In Isaiah 30, 21, 22. He said even if you err. Because you have that relationship. He said you hear a voice behind you saying. That is not the way to go. Turn back. So a man who has intimacy cannot err. And if you study that scripture in, verse, in the second verse. Verse 22. You know what they were doing? They were burning their idols and turning back to God. It was on the strength of their return to God that precision and accuracy was weaved into them. So when we talk about intimacy, it's not just to, to get you to become a religious man praying endlessly. No. There are benefits. Practical benefits. Existential benefits that are located to this reality. When a man sustains intimacy, the quality of his life increases. When a man builds intimacy, there is transfiguration that causes everything around him to work. When a man builds intimacy, his life cannot but command impact and exploit. When a man builds intimacy, he has direction. He cannot be confused. 
the light of God will shine upon him. Job 29 verse 4, he says, As I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle, he said, by light, I walk through darkness. A man of intimacy cannot be stranded. He will always know what to do and how to do it because God will become a light unto his feet and a lamp in his path. The fourth benefit, fifth benefit of intimacy is that intimacy imparts rest and dominion. When you find people who are always having anxiety issues, living in uncertainty and fear, it's because they don't have a walk with God. When you have a walk with God, rest will come. Dominion will become natural. This is why Moses was able to operate in the level of dominion he operated. Psalm 103 verse 7 said, God made known to the children of Israel his deeds. He said, but his ways he made known to Moses. So when you know God, you have rest. They came before the Red Sea. Everybody started murmuring. Moses knew the key. Murmuring cannot help. So he went back to God. Lord, what do we do? Go forward. Stretch thy rod. And when Moses stretched the rod, the Bible said God parted the Red Sea. The people who didn't have intimacy, although they were more, but their number counted for nothing. That's why in this kingdom, it's not politics. It's about your relationship with God. Imagine over 4 million men could not do anything about the Red Sea. But one man, that means in that instance, that one man was more important than the 4 million people. After they shouted and screamed and murmured, nothing happened. But few moments with God, Moses came back with solution. And when Moses approached the Red Sea, it will look stupid. He stretched it, you are wondering, we are trying how to cross water, you are stretching stick. After a while, we discovered that with the blast of his nostrils, he parted the Red Sea. This is how men come into rest. The business may not be doing well. You now go to the place of prayer and God tell you, wait for three weeks. Instead of having high blood pressure in that three weeks, you will now wait. When it's three weeks, you go back to God. It's three weeks. He will give you one strategy. You will now discover that you didn't need to stress yourself in the first place. When you find men struggling, anxiety, all forms of miscalculation, it's because they don't stay with God. When we were about to start, and I've shared this story with you before. Number one, coming from Abuja, Makodi to Abuja, if it's not God, it's a huge mistake. Because everything on my expenditure profile multiplied by at least 2,000%. Everything. From transport to accommodation. Everything. In Makodi, if you have 5 million or 10 million, you can get a Ah, it turned like this. Ah, you use that is one year plus. <laughs> when you come to Abuja, you say you are looking for 1,500 sitter. They will tell you one million per use. <laughs> you will now say, wait, what do you per what is use? <laughs> you will need a dictionary to redefine terms. When I showed up, me and my friends, we move around this city from Kubwa to Guarimpa. So we move around. I'm telling you, we move around. You come to this hall, they, they call a figure. We even went somewhere, they said, okay, what we'll do is to erect, we'll erect a tent, give us two weeks, but you pay 36 million per use, per year. That was the cheapest thing we had, 36 million per year. Do you know the figure you are calling? What, do you, what is 36? <laughs> I went back to the place of prayer. I prayed, I prayed, and God said, it is well. As I came out from the place of prayer, a friend of mine came to town and called me that is around, Evangelist Lawrence. And he said he wants to do his battle axe retreat. I said, okay, no problem. He said, there's a church, there's an RCCG church that somebody told him to see the pastor if we could use the place. I said, all right, let's go now. I'm free today. We drove into the office. So this is a senior pastor. You know, the court sees and all of that. They entered and were greeting. The moment I entered, the man stood up from his chair. What? How did you come here? I've been looking for you for two years. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> I've been looking for you for two, two years. I'm around. I'm not. I'm in Nigeria. And I said, well, I've relocated to Abuja. He said, what do you mean? What are you coming to do? I said, God, I should start here. The man turned it to his, his personal 
project. He was the one that started looking for her. He now made calls until he took me to Ecumenical Center. Meanwhile, Ecumenical Center is like the center of Christianity in Nigeria. So I started from the center. So we spoke from there. <laughs> you don't know God. You don't know God. When we had to live there, we had just two weeks. How do you make the arrangement? These equipments we are seeing, don't joke. This is millions. In case you don't know the meaning of millions, I'm showing you. <laughs> this is millions. This is we are seeing. We had to migrate and we needed to change all our equipment. And we had two weeks. I went back. As I was praying, I was praying, I was praying because they had searched for seven days. Nothing was working. We moved to the studio. I was ministering from the studio. When I finished, I go to the altar. And I, I finished praying. I went to shower, come out of the bathroom. I heard Opiaga. Oh, I remember. That was when I remember there's a place like this. I called her. The moment I called her, let's see tomorrow. It is settled. The whole thing is history. We are here. Every equipment came out from where they needed to come out from. By all means, we are here. Because of one word from the throne room. You want to have rest. Find God's presence. That's why God put Adam in Eden. If you are in Eden, you can't have high blood pressure. If you are in Eden, you cannot have any problem. There is dominion there. There is rest. The day you step out of Eden, make sure, know that you will start toiling. Out of the sweat of thy brow shall thou eat bread. Because if you are not in Eden, you must labor. You must struggle. So the fifth benefit of intimacy is rest and dominion and i can continue telling you these stories there are many so many but sometimes because we are young ministers if you say stories too early it's a problem wait until you are 70 years that time you have the right <laughs> praise god now 